Hello everyone, how are we doing today? And welcome to today's video. So today we are going to be doing the example problems related to sex linked traits. So I have two example problems we're gonna to go to with uh, a couple parts in each to make sure you can understand how to one, read the question, make the cross and analyze the results of that cross based on what you get. So two problems here and like I, we always do all of these problems, Make sure you do them yourself first to realize where you're struggling. Uh, so here I'll read each problem and then we'll go back and complete them. So number one here is hemophilia is an X-linked recessive disorder in humans. Predict the likelihood of each of the following couples producing a hem hemophiliac son and of a hemophiliac daughter. So you're just you know expressing, expressing the ratios of each. Um, so a female carrier and an affected male a female non-carrier and affected male, and then a female carrier and normal male. So you do a cross for each of those and analyze the results. And then problem two, in gnarls, the orange spine is holandric. So you have to remember what a holandric gene is here. You breed Bubba, your orange-spined male, with Dixie, and they produce two pups, Bo, which is male, and Delta, which is a female. When the pups are mature, you breed Delta with Bob a male gnarl without orange spines, and bow with Sue. So it sounds like a lot, but you break it down step by step each time. Our first question here is, will Delta and Bob produce any progeny with orange spines? If so, what sex or sexes can have orange spines? And the last question, will Bo and Sue produce any progeny with orange spines? If so, what sex or sexes can have orange spines? All right, let's begin breaking these problems down now and starting with the first one here. So hemophilia, X-linked recessive. Oh, there's your first clue. Uh, predict the likelihood, and it's in human, so we know it's the XXXY system. Predict the likelihood of each of the following couples, couples producing a son or daughter with hemophilia. So a female carrier, you know, has to be, remember how we write females XX. So female carrier, let's just do, so plus is wild type, so that's normal. And then H, let's make hemophilia. And I don't like to write the cross sign here when doing these because it gets confusing. So I just put a dot to represent cross and an affected male. So if a male has it, remember male carries the one X chromosome and the Y. So right there's your cross. And then you just set up this Punnett square and you know complete it quickly. I'm not going to go over how to set up Punnett squares. That should be, you know, simple knowledge by this point, we've done a lot by now, especially with all you know the branch diagrams and whatnot, but I'll, I'll draw this out. It's super straight too. And again, always write the dominant form first when you fill these in, and then we can analyze the results. Okay, here is our final Punnett square. Now we need to analyze results. Remember, females are XX, males are XY. So here, there's a, if we look at the females, this female will be a carrier, this female will have it. Let's do female green has it out of the two females. And then male, this male has it. This male would be normal. Uh, so here there's a 50% chance of male, oops, of male or female children, progeny having hemophilia. So it's a 50% remember this is conditional of each. Okay, next question here. So it's not, not too bad. You just have to set up the Punnett square and this is just practice for writing these sex-linked crosses. So now we have a female non-carrier. So a female non-carrier would be, you know, dominant form of each and affected male. So same thing as before. And another thing that this problem is teaching us here. So for a female to have it here, the mother has to be a carrier and the father has to have it. So that's why excellent traits are more common in males because here the father has it. And you, you would know that beforehand. You don't always know if there's a female carrier that could hide, but the male that won't hide. Uh, so a male must have it and the female must be a carrier for a female daughter to get it. And this is what these example problems are meant to show here. So here, a female doesn't have it and a male does. When you do uh, this cross here, this, these are the results. So when you read these, both of the females here are carriers. 
but they don't have it, and neither male has it. So the answer for this one then oops, is 0% for all. You don't need to write it out. So no chance of any offspring having it. But you do know that two of the females are carriers. So if a male father has hemophilia, all daughters will be carriers of hemophilia. And that's important to know, especially, you know, her families and making pedigree charts and things like that. Next up here, a female carrier and a normal male. So let's write it out. Female carrier. We've had this, we've had this one before. Oops, let's write the dominant trait first. Cross a normal male. Now, let's see what happens. Let's say one of these daughters up here went off and had children then with a normal male. Here would be the outcome. And here are the, the Punnett square for this. So here we have a female carrier. This female here doesn't have it. This male does not have it, but this male has it. So if you have a son, there's a 50% chance and then a 0% chance if it's a daughter. Um, so here, 50% chance, and all you need is a female carrier here. So one of these daughters up here, female carrier, you know that if that female then has a son with a normal male, there's a 50% chance that son will have hemophilia. 25% chance overall that the child, regardless of male or female, will have it. Okay, so second problem here now. So those are typical sex link problems. You can't really get more complex than that. You know, this explained all the different situations you could pretty much, you know, come up with to show how these different ratios work out. Okay, so now in gnarls, the orange spine gene is holandric. Remember, holandric means it's found on the Y chromosome. And when you write these out, you either have it or you don't. Uh, so when I say it has it, I put a little, you know, degree sign there or, you know, not sign. Uh, so you breed Bubba, your orange spine male. So this gene is holandric. So orange spine male Bubba is X, Y, not with Dixie. And so it doesn't matter. Dixie's just X, X. And they produce two pups, Bo, which is male, and Delta is a female. So let's, you know, think you know, Bo is a male. If this is hol holandric, we know Bo is going to have it and Delta will not. So when the pups are mature, we then continue breeding them and we'll, we'll get to that once we get there. Uh, so here, let's just write it all out with all the information we know. So first we have Bubba. I know great names here, right? Bubba has it. And we have Dixie. Dixie doesn't have it. Um, they cross, we'll just write it like this, and produce offspring, Bo and Delta. And again, like when you read this problem, it's a lot of names thrown at you. It could be, you know, you could read it and get confused. Just start writing it out like this, and then you could see it a little better. So Bo is a male, and you know Bo has to have it. Um, you, could, you could do this cross to see it, but Bo will have it. So if the father has it, the son has it. And Delta is a female, doesn't matter. When the pups are mature, you breed Delta with Bob, a male gnarl without orange spikes. So then this one will be Bob. And then, um, and Bo with Sue. Doesn't matter what Sue is. So here's where the problem is. So will Delta and Bob produce any progeny with orange spikes? If so, what sexes can have orange spikes? So here it's looking at um, Delta and Bob here. So, you know, X, X cross X, Y. There's nothing on the Y. You don't have to do this cross to figure out. So this one, no, none of the progeny will have orange spines, will no longer present itself. Now, will Bo and Sue produce any progeny? So here, now we have X, X cross X, Y, not to keep it uh, the same here. Um, so with orange spines, we'll write out this cross just to show it, to prove it. So we have, you know, X, Y, not. X, X, all the females, they can't have it, but all males will continue to have it. So yes, 100% males.
And I know this was a really simple problem here, but I just wanted to show how Y length is only with males. You can't have a Y length trait being carried by females, going with females. If a father has it, all sons will have it too. Uh, so that was just like a little you know refresher from the lecture portion for Y length. And then this one was all about X length. So now, you, you can't forget these because these will all come back when analyzing pedigree charts. So remembering these little tips and tricks will be very helpful when looking at a pedigree chart and analyzing it. But we'll be getting that to that in a future chapter coming up soon. All right, that's all that we have for chapter four here. Next in chapter five, we're going to be going over some new fun things when it comes to non-Mendelian genetics and how other genes could affect certain out. out expressions of these genes and how you can have different mixtures and so forth so it's going to get a little bit more fun and complex and i'll see you all starting then all right that's all for now let me know if you have any questions and have a great day bye bye